Hello. In this video I'm going to be talking about using the TFSEC extension for VS Code. Um, I won't go into a lot of information or detail about installing TFSEC itself because that's quite specific to your chosen platform. Uh, what I will say is if you go to the TFSEC documentation, hit getting started and then installation, we've got details on how to install. So if you're using Brew on Linux or Mac, you can do a Brew install. Uh, Windows, you have the option of Chocolatey and Scoop, or you can download the latest binary release from our GitHub project, um, and that covers all of the different platforms. Alternatively, you can do a Go install, but you need to bear in mind that that's going to install it from source on your machine, um, so it will TFSEC will think it, that it is a development install, and that has uh, it causes an issue when you're doing ups updates from the uh, from the TFSEC extension, but I'll go over that shortly. So what am I going to be covering? Uh, I will talk about installing the extension, then we're going to go over a fairly basic example and run TFSEC. We'll look at what the issues that, that are identified are, fix some of them, um, and then we're going to finish up with doing some bulk ignores. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is install tfsec extension so if we go to the extensions on the left hand side and then uh, search for tfsec and do install now you can see on the left hand side we now have an icon for tfsec uh, that has findings explorer and um, findings helper so i mentioned about updates we have this little cloud button you can download the latest version of tfsec now what that will do is it'll check your current version, it'll check what the latest is. In this case it can see that the latest version available is 63.1 and our latest is uh, 63.1 so there's nothing to download. If you are using a locally built version then your version is development and in that case it can't do updates for you. So you need to, you need to use one of the proper installation mechanisms or use the, uh, the release binary. Okay. So we'll come back to this page when we've actually got something to, to look at. So the first thing we're going to do is create our providers TF. We're going to create some basic Terraform. So in here, we'll create a provider. Uh, we'll call it an AWS one. Um, the region we're going to set to me, which is EUS2. Save that. And if we do a Terraform in it, then that's going to pull down our I uh, pull down the provider for AWS and we can do some work. So what we're going to do, we're going to do an example of a very basic VPC. We're going to put a security group in it. We're going to create a new instance for a bastion and then that security group is going to allow port 22 so we can SSH onto it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a network TF. I, I should say that this, this example is um, not an example of wonderful Terraform or um, uh, best practices for infrastructure. It's about showing you what the extension does. So the first thing we'll need is a resource and we'll go for an AWS VPC and let's call this main for one of nothing better. So we need to set the CIDR block and in this case, let's do 10 0 0 0 16. And then that's, that'll do for a basic VPC. Then we're going to need a security group. So we'll do a AWS security group. My typing's bad. Security group. And we'll call this one Bastion SG for our Bastion. So what do we need? We need a VPC ID. VPC ID. And that is going to go to our AWS VPC main ID. We'll give it a name and we're going to call it a Bastion SG and we'll give it a description and we'll call it security group for Bastion access. Okay so this security group it's not going to do much without a rule so let's create a rule. So that's going to be an AWS security group rule and we'll call this Bastion SSH Ingress. So what do we need on this? We need a security group ID. So that is AWS security group 
bastiansg.id. Then we need a type, so we're going to use ingress, a protocol, and that's TCP for SSH, from port, from port 22, to port is 22, and for the CIDR range I want to be able to get to it from anywhere, so I'm going to say 0000. zero, zero, zero. Okay, so that's the basis of our network sorted out. So the next thing we're going to do is add our bastion. So we need an AMI. So let's create a data for an address AMI and we're going to use Ubuntu and uh, what do we need? We want an owner. So let's go with uh, Canonical which is 0997201 09477. We want the most recent. We're going to filter. In this filter, we want to filter on name. And the values that we'll accept are, a, excuse me, Ubuntu images, MVM, SSD, Ubuntu, we'll go with Focal 2004. Uh, AMD 64 server. We need another filter because we want to filter on um, virtualization type. Virtualization type. And for this, we're going to accept the values are HVM. HVM. Okay. So lastly, we need to create our instance. So that is going to be a resource. It's an AWS instance. And we'll call that Bastion. Let's put some tags on it. We'll call a name and we'll call it Bastion. We need to have a AMI and in that case we're going to use this data dot address AMI dot Ubuntu dot ID and a instance type. So we'll use a T3 micro. Okay, so that should be everything we need to create our bastion. So let's validate this code. Okay, so that looks good. Um, so now we can go to TFSEC. So if we, on the left hand side, we choose the TFSEC menu and we do run and it's found a number of issues. So let's start with the critical ones. So if I click critical, it's telling me that the issue is that um, we're using public ingress. So when I actually cl click on the file, it'll take me, it'll highlight the line where there's a problem. And down in the findings helper, it'll give me a lot more information about what's actually going on. So in this case, uh, we can see that it's a critical issue that the port is exposed on the internet and that we need to add a more restrictive CIDR range. So for example, let's say that I am 82, 34, 43, 21, 32. So that is that is using um, my public IP. It's not mine, but it would be using my public IP uh, at home. And we're being more secure by saying that only I can access this bastion. Um, we could do a range. We, if I was working in an office, then we could put the office's IP. Um, but the idea is that we don't just make it available to the whole internet. We need to we need to um, tighten that up. So there's that. So if we save that and rerun, that's our critical issue gone. So let's look at the high. So the bastion, our issue here is that we should activate session tokens for the instance metadata service. Okay. Um, so. How do we do that? So if we go down here, we've got more information and we can click on that. And if we go to the browser, we'll see that there's an explanation of what needs to be done. There's the impact um, and it'll show us an example. So this example is telling us that we just need to add metadata options. So if I go back to our code and then on our instance, if I add metadata options, rerun, then that's cleared off our high. So what's the last one? The last one is 
a problem with the rule itself. So it's missing a description. So the impact is descriptions provide context. Um, I don't know that I really care about this one. I've got a security group uh, description and the rules in this case, I think it's fairly self-explanatory. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on that and say ignore. What that's gonna do is it's gonna rerun TFSec immediately um, and that's our last issue. But what it's done is it's added this annotation to the resource, which is saying that it should ignore any issues that are for description of security group rules. Um, so that's the standard TFSec feature. I'll go. I'll do a video which covers more about the different options because you can set expiries or you can set workspaces. Uh, but that's it. We fix all of our issues by either ignoring them or actually solving the problem. So from here we can push our code. It can go to PR um, and onwards from there. So that's the end of this video covering the basics of the, the VS Code extension. Uh, like I say, there'll be more TFSec videos. Um, so thanks for watching.